We wanted to try to uh, put, get a recording situation that was fun. All a question of surrounding yourself with the same kind of weirdos. Tonight, an ear to the ground special. Blue Rodeo on the farm. about coming here I think that uh, we often get too ambitious you know we, like we we just think that we can pull things stuff off like doing this TV show like it you know well it's just nuts like we we said we got 20 25 songs right that we haven't really played that much we want to make an EP so Jim goes well let's make a TV show oh, okay great great you know like, it, it, let's just throw that into the mix too so.
like when I was in my early 20s, I, I felt, uh, you know, beautifully shiftless. Like, who cares? I mean, Greg and I started a band because we didn't have anything else to do, really. And so I missed that magic feeling of nowhere to go a bit. But I, uh, you know, the things that excite me, I, Mm, last night out here, you know, just looking at the sky, it was beautiful. Uh, raising, you know, being with my kids, uh, I think there's tons of, of, uh, of exciting things now. I, some of the traveling we've done, you know, go to Telluride or go to the Yukon, up to Dawson City, you get just giddy by how, how great it is and how unusual. And that's a big part of our lives, you know. Well, I first saw Jim and Greg, um, Jim and Greg playing a band called the Hi-Fis uh, in 1978 and uh, they used to play at the Cabana Room and uh, that was the first time I was ever at the Cabana Room was going to see them play and uh, you know I, I thought boy that's great I probably should uh, should try this too it looked like uh, it looked like a lot of fun. wanted a gig and uh, said, you know, we did a little band, et cetera, et cetera, left, came back, I hadn't given them a gig yet. Finally, both of them, both Jim and Greg sat down and said, look, you have one choice. Give us a gig because we're not leaving until you give us a gig. And that's my little Blue Rodeo story.
Well, Jim and Greg and I used to live together, more or less, and uh, we used to go to the Russian steam baths down in New York. These like the oldest steam baths in New York City. And we'd go there and we'd just schwitz until we were all sweating and sweating. We'd talk about their songs and my films and all our hopes and dreams. And we didn't used to have very much money in those days. Uh, now I still don't, but they do and have a lot. And we would go out into the street and that, there was one, they had a gig at CBGB's that night. We went out to the street and there was a guy playing three card Monty on the street with a cardboard box. And none of us had a lot of money. <clears throat> I hung back and Greg and Jim blew the whole wad of three card Monty. And uh, we're so broke they had to walk to the gig with their guitars at CBGB's. It's my favorite memory of them. So you saw that fire in the sky. try to sort of chide each other that we're not factory workers. You know, everybody's like, oh, I don't practice anymore. Or if you're a factory worker, you'd still have five hours left in your shift. Yeah, well, we're not. Okay? But you know, sometimes that reflection is, is, is exciting in itself. You know, hey, we're musicians. We make, a, make our living being musicians. And look where we are. Oh, it's been great. I just, you know, get up in the morning, walk downstairs, have a coffee, play my bass. Next thing I know, it's midnight. You know, I don't have to walk more than 50 feet a day if I don't want to. in the winter of 1991 uh, one of the stops the most memorable for me was trail bc the gig that we did with them was in the kaminko gymnasium and it held about a thousand people and it seemed to me that the entire community the whole of trail was there from five-year-old kids to folks that were 80 or more and it was a, a really a great experience to uh, be a part of and I always thought it was a great thing that Blue Rodeo always seemed to get to these places.
Well, moving out here has helped a lot for me in my writing. You know, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful solitude. And, and loneliness can be quite inspiring and beautiful if it's, if it's sort of self-imposed. There's a forest just up the road here, nice forest that stretches for, oh, maybe about 20 or 30 miles. And, and just to go walking up there for a couple hours just cleans my brain out. And often if I'm working on a song and I'm just, well, I guess uh, songwriting for me is just somehow getting in touch with myself and getting in touch with this, this voice in me that sort of knows where the songs go. You know, it's just, there's, of all the people that live in my head, there's this one guy that is a good songwriter. And if I can get him to the front, well, then the songs are easier to write.
stuck the note into his hand Later on they took his car and Drove on down where the beaches are He wrote her name in the sand Never even let go of her that way for those five days in May made all the stars around them shine funny how you can look in vain living on nerves and such sweet pain loneliness that cuts so fine to find the face you've seen a thousand times I just I respect what they do. I think they write good pop songs that people enjoy and it has something to say to a lot of people. And it's, uh, you know, when, when you're lucky enough to be doing music as a job, it's really nice to also be able to do it with people that uh, do it well and that you, you respect what they're doing and enjoy what they're doing. Looking back, it's hard to tell why they stood while others fell. Spend your life working it out well, All I know is one cloudy day They both just ran away Rain on the windshield headed south Oh yeah, she loved the lines around his mouth Sometimes the world begins Sets you up on your Mostly about Jim Cuddy, because um, Jim Cuddy is who I know the best in, in one sense, because I play hockey with him sometimes, and um, you know you get to learn something about somebody by playing hockey with them. And, and the problem that Jim has with, with hockey is that he he comes to the rink dressed in his stage gear and. His pants are just too tight for him to skate up and down the ice. Situation emerged one day when um, my manager called Jim up because I was looking to open a show for Blue Rodeo. And, and Jim Cuddy said, well, the only way we're going to let Andrew open for us is if uh, he starts passing the puck to me giving me some breakaways and making me look good out on the ice on Monday morning. And since that day, Jim's been the leading scorer. I think that songwriting is living and listening. You know, like everybody says stuff that is like just brilliant. You know, just little lines and stuff. And when I'm in a in a good sort of 
mode in my brain, I'm a little more receptive to what's around me. So, but the thing is, is that I've got to get out there and live too. You know, I can't just if I just sit in here and start writing and blah, blah, you know, just nothing happens. You know, it's got to be. It's got to be with, and with living too. And so it's been very nice, you know, over the years that that music and songwriting is taking me to, you know, everything from 500 miles north of Red Lake to, you know, Alphabet Town, getting mugged uh, at the Yellow Door. You say that you're leaving. Well, that comes in. Sometimes a song in my life plays more importance than it should because I think it's, you know, the the statement of my life for that moment. And, you know, that's a little pathetic, but it's my, you know, endeavor. You spend a lot more time as a as a human on this earth uh, considering sadness and and. Those, those things that are obstacles in your life as opposed to, hey, this is great. Now, I've tried to put in this song, in these songs, some of the elements of, of things that are, are in my life that are happy. And, uh, but I, by the time I get to the third verse, there, there's always some twist, you know? I mean, life is a series of ups and downs, and whether it's just the randomness of, you know that you can cruise along, uh, things are going great, and you just know that up ahead is gonna whew, dive bomb. So, that's inevitably it gets into songs is that the you know fate always twists things hey it's me what a big surprise calling you up from a restaurant round the bend just got in from a way up north making tired now not to use a friend Talk 
to you Nothing wrong, just nothing ever goes as planned Many times I thought I'd call Didn't have your number in my hand I know it's true You never do the same thing to me I never meant to make you cry And though I know I shouldn't I've never played in a group like this where there's actually been two songwriters or songwriters at all, and that's what Jim and Greg are first and foremost, is that they're songwriters. So what you learn, the experience, I suppose, is learning songwriting, learning how songs are put together. And although I've sort of done that in the past, I never really sat down and thought about the actual craft and how to actually get a flow happening emotionally, musically. And it's been very good uh, from that point of view. so many plans something always seemed to turn out wrong never could catch up to you moving on and doing all you've done I don't know why harder I try They were great songwriters, and uh, you know, it's uh, Blue Rodeo is one of the uh, you know, it's a real Canadian band, it's a true Canadian band, it's got a Canadian kind of sound. It's nice to be a part of that. other for so long and it's it's very funny um, the relationship of of someone that you've known for a long time and and the you hold on to when you've been a friend of somebody a long time you hold on to the aspect of when you met like that aspect is is always going to be part of the relationship and so there is an adolescent aspect to our relationship and uh, and that's a very funny thing because you know, 
in life, so much changes, but so much doesn't change. Well, I, you know, the thing that brought us together was sense of humor. I, Greg and I don't think we're the most uh, natural fit as friends when we first came together. But he has sort of a wicked sense of humor that I really, uh, I really enjoy. And uh, so I think that for the longest time, we just coasted on that. <laughs> Greg's openness as a, as a creative person. That is very inspiring to me because I'm not as open creatively as Greg is. So I find that that pushes me a lot and I, 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 th I know that it's difficult. And so I respect that, you know, the fortitude it takes to do that. Um, I, I respect Greg's integrity. He's, he, he's certainly the sort of an integrity beacon in the band.
Jim is a, is a he's a very sensitive person, and he's he's a very sensitive soul, and he he sort of he sort of runs the business of the band, and it's a very uh, brave endeavor, you know, to be involved in in all the creative aspects of being in a band, and and to um, and he's got a family. I think that the, the thing that I would respect the most about is his ability to balance all the aspects of his life. Smile for the cameras. Remember to smile for the cameras. My world is, is just the people that I know, and, I, and I, I always find the human spirit quite an inspiring thing. And, uh, and you know, again, that line, you know, reality is what you get away with, and uh, that world seems like a bad dream to me and, and I don't uh, I don't know what the world is going to be, be like you know but um, whenever you know if the if if the hordes start you know coming over the hills here well then I'll just move further away you know it's all a question of surrounding yourself with the same kind of weirdos and and then it's then it's fine I think the only 